with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am, st uh, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Thanks be to God. I'm 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Thanks be to God. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born nor of, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. He's just a baby, ten fingers, ten toes, two eyes, two ears, one mouth and one nose. He's just a baby, cries out for mum's arms as he lies in a manger in the innkeeper's barn. He's just a baby, yet the sky changed its form as a new star appeared when this baby was born. He's just a baby, Yet the hosts of heaven sang hallelujah to this baby, hallelujah, son of man. He's just a baby, yet drove a mad king wild, who stained the streets with innocence, looking for this child. Why? Because he's just a baby, yet will walk on the seas, feed thousands with nothing and perform miracles with ease. He's just a baby, yet will carry out the law, live a life of perfection so man will fear no more. He's just a baby, yet will speak to every nation, every broken heart and lost soul, he will fight for their salvation. He's just a baby, yet when they call him man, they will shout for crucifixion and drive nails through his hands. He's just a baby, yet at his final breath, all creation will shake, mourning his death. He's just a baby, yet when he's laid in his grave, he will rise three days later, victorious to save. He is just a baby, when we look in his festive cot. But the truth is, he's not just a baby. He is the Almighty Son of God.
well, I have to say, I'm surprised you're here. Actually, I'm surprised I'm here. I'm surprised any of us are here. But I don't mean here in this building. I'm surprised any of us are here at all. Do you know the odds against there being a planet that is suitable for life, and then all of the things that have to happen for that life to come into existence, all those little intricate, teeny-weeny details that have to happen in exactly the precise order, well, if you were to put them on a piece of A4 paper and sort of plaster the inside of this building with it, you might get close. You've actually got more chance of winning the national lottery every day for the rest of your life than life coming into existence. It's incredible. Incredible bubble bubble bubble. It's so incredible bubble bubble that some some scientists think there must be dozens of parallel universes where they didn't quite get it right. Now, there is no evidence that they exist at all, but intellectually they feel that there must be. But there is no scientific evidence. Other scientists, and I have to tell you, that two-thirds of the Nobel Prize winners for science, the best scientists of their generation, in the first hundred years of the Nobel Prize, two-thirds of them fall into this gang. They think it was made. Actually, it's more than two-thirds. Two-thirds of them are Christians, and about 20% of the rest are Jews. So it's actually more like 85%. Of all of the hundred best scientists, sorry, the best scientists in physics, chemistry, and medicine in the first hundred years of the Nobel Prize were either Christians, 66%, or Jews, 20%. It's incredible that you are here, that I am here. If you stood next to me when I was singing, you'd think it was incredibly bad that I was here. But there's something even more incredible. The God who made all of this, and just think about it for a minute, that God must be incredibly big, unbelievably incredibly big, chose to become a baby. Now you think about this for a minute. Human babies are frankly pathetic. I don't want to be rude. If any of you is a baby, I don't want to upset you so that you pick on me when I'm even older than I am today. But you think about it. When a baby's born, what can it do? It just lays there like a blob. A few weeks ago, one of the members of this church had had a baby and she brought it to church about a day later and all the ladies were going all gooey all over it like ladies do. And all the teenage girls were going all gooey over it like teenage girls do. But it just lay there. Blah. Even a baby kangaroo has a bit more about it. It crawls out and it crawls up its mum into the pouch and it lays there and sucks for months. But human, you leave a human baby on its own and what does it do? It dies. Humans are the most pathetic babies in all creation. They can't do anything. And yet the God who made everything, this incredibly big God, chose to become a human baby. And he didn't exactly choose to do it in a palace, did he? You know the story. I don't know if you've ever worked in a cow shed. I have. I tell you now, it's not nice having your dinner in a cow shed. I didn't do it, by the way, but I wouldn't want to do it. But you certainly wouldn't have a baby in a cow shed. And God chose that. To a poor family. In an unimportant part of the world. Not a palace, not a king. Not a prince or a princess. It's incredible. Life is incredible, God, but it's even more incredible than that. Why did he do it? Did he come down to do some great power display? Like Superman? No. For 33 years he lived in the backwater of the Roman Empire and hardly anybody knew he was there. And he gathered a gang round him of people who were not particularly important, fishermen and tax collectors, tax collectors and fishermen. Wow. And why did he do it? He did it to put right everything that's gone wrong. If you don't think things have gone wrong, then I wonder where you've been. If you're young, you might not notice. 
But you've only got to be 12, 13 years old and upwards and you know. You've only got to look at the other end of Europe and see what's going on there. People in the cold because of the arrogant ambition of a man who is stupid. Or if you look at Iran where young women and old women are beaten to death because they won't wear a headscarf. But you look at home and you look at our country and there are people who earn millions just for shoving money around and other people who work really, really hard and both go out to work and only exist by going to a food bank. And you tell me nothing's wrong. And look at yourself. Can you honestly admit that there's nothing wrong with you and me? Have you given God the place in his life that he deserves? Everything we have, he created it. That's what 66% of the Nobel Prize winners said. Sorry, 86% of the Nobel Prize winners said. And do we give him credit for it? Even the best of us, we don't, do we? And he came to put it right. He came to put it right at great cost because it was going to cost him dying on a cross. And you know, however great our scientists or our philosophers or our historians or our literature writers could ever be, they would never understand what happened on that cross when Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he did. It's incredible. Why did he do it? I'm going to use a rude word at this point, okay? So if you don't want to be offended, put your fingers in your ears. He did it because he loves you. Not that soppy kind of love, but love that costs. He did it because he loves his creation and he loves you and me. He offers us the chance to join his family. You might have heard it at the end of the last reading we have. To those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Wow. You know, if you're a child, you have great privileges. I have four sons. They're all men now, but they have great privileges. If they're hard up, they go to the bank of dad. And I just, fine, I'm their dad. If they need someone to help them, they go to dad, and usually it falls down if I make it because I'm not very good at it. If you are in God's family, you have a father far better than any of us could ever be, with a bank that's limitless. Not of money, but of grace and kindness. And anybody can join. Doesn't matter what race you are, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. And every one of us comes in the same way, from our dead queen to somebody living on the streets of Braintree whose life has fallen apart, who has no hope. If we get into God's family, it's the same way. It's through Jesus. And it's free. And it's open to you. Isn't that incredible? Incredible, bubble, bubble, bubble. After the service, you'll be going out after you've eaten your seasonal refreshments and your coffee and tea. The people on the door will give you a little booklet. Please read it. Inside, it's got a card, and it invites you to go to something called Hope Explored. Nigel and Joe will be running a three-week, I think it's three weeks, maybe four-week course after Christmas where you can explore these things. If you want to talk to somebody about it now, then grab hold of me and Nigel on the door and we'll talk to you tonight. But if you want to think about it, then please, don't throw the card away, fill it in, hand it in to somebody, and go to that course and explore this. Because if you do know Jesus, you will know he is the greatest. It's the most wonderful thing to be one of God's children. But if you don't, I don't want to be like a cheap salesman and push you into making an instant decision you regret. Just explore it after Christmas. You can go to that meeting. It's in a comfortable environment. You can argue, ask your questions. And maybe you'll end up along with two-thirds of the Nobel Prize winners in science in realizing that the incredible business of life only came about because the incredible God who made the world is also the incredible God who died on a cross for you.
Do please sit down. Roger mentioned towards the end of his talk our Hope Explored course. It's just three weeks and it will run on three Mondays, starting on Monday the 9th of January uh, over in Church House. But I just want to show you a very short trailer, a video which tells you about what it's about. There are few emotions more powerful than hope. It's a spark inside you that brings a smile to your lips, a light that shows on your face, a feeling that lifts your head and pulls you forward. These days, hope like that often feels hard to come by. Maybe you've experienced your share of disappointments, but real hope is what the Christian faith claims to offer. A joyful expectation for the future, based on true events in the past, which changes everything about my present. Hope Explored is a three session series for anyone who is looking for a hope worth having. Whatever you do or don't believe, this is your invitation to explore, to discuss, to question, to discover. This is Hope Explored. So in each of the three weeks, there's a short talk from Rico Tice, who was on the video, and then, then a chance to discuss in small groups. And the first thing, week asks the question, where do you look to for your hope? Secondly, where do you look to for peace? And lastly, where do you look to for purpose? Do please join us if you'd like to. Now, and as you're leaving, we'll be, uh, there are a few things you might want to take. The first is this, uh, for the children, this really excellent little book called, called Nativity Activities. It's got some word searches, um, spot the difference, mazes and colouring and other things. So uh, do take a copy of this. For everyone else, this, this booklet called Not Just Another Christmas. And it talks about, a bit more about what R Roger was speaking about, about the real meaning of Christmas. Uh, and there's uh, an invitation to Hope Explored in, inside that. And the last thing is details of our Christmas services. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our, our carol service. Uh, next week we've got a Chris Dingle service. That's the one with the, the orange and the, um, the, the sweets and the candle in the top. Uh, and it all stands for something. It all, all, all means something. Uh, that's four o'clock on Saturday. Really good for, for children and families. Uh, we've got a midnight service, but don't come here at midnight. Come here at 11 p.m. We finish just after midnight. Uh, and then on Christmas Day, we've got an 8 a.m. and a 10 a.m. service here in church. And 10 a.m. the following week, family service on New Year's Day. I hope you'll be able to join us as well for refreshments, to get your hands around a hot cup of tea or coffee. But as we finish, a prayer. May the joy of the angels the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be your, yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.